Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of this insanely awesome interview with Sean Robinson, Associate Marketing Manager. Did I get that right? At yes, you did. Panasonic. Sean, welcome back to my little show. How's it going? Very well. So uh, for anyone who's clicked on this for the first time and going, what the heck is this all about? This is part two. Part two of a very extensive, very in-depth yeah, interview. Technically, we call these conversations with Mr. Sean Robinson about this little thing here the GH5, which last time we did this, we didn't have this. I couldn't do this, but now I can do this. Look at that beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Love it. And the first part was really right after the big announcement came, right? It was right after you came back from uh, CES. It was right mm -hmm. before I left for Mexico. We, really, we squeezed that in there an hour before I got on the plane. And I was able to ask Sean a bunch of questions that I hadn't seen answers out there yet. All the stuff at that point, all the main media out there was, oh, what are the specs? What video format does it record in? And this is all stuff that's been covered a million times over. So we took the opportunity to get deeper into several different things that I hadn't heard about, specifically about photography, especially, but obviously about video as well. And we talked for an hour and 15 minutes and it was packed full of information. And for my YouTube channel, at least, an unbelievable number of people have watched this thing. It's, I think it's uh, over 16,000 people have watched it at this point. And we got almost that many comments. And the comments were questions because at the end of part one, we said, hey, what have we missed? What have we not talked about that you want to know? And Sean graciously offered to do a part two. And that was, I guess, about a month ago. And here we are now ready to record part two yeah. with a list of approximately 75 questions to go through. So if oh, you... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a long list. Sean's got the sheet in front of him. The uh, the Google Docs here, we're, we're going to go through this one by one and hit them all. We have grouped these. Well, these questions have all come from the comments on part one. So if you're watching this and you go back to part one, you add a question there that you want to answer later, chances are it's not going to get seen. So after this, if there's questions you want answered, we'll probably try to answer them just in text. I don't think we're going to do a part three on this, but you never know. It kind of depends on how this goes. But um, other than that, let's see. Oh, the other thing to tell you is if you scroll down on this video that you're watching right now in the description in YouTube, every question is listed with a time code and you can just click on that time to jump straight to that question. So I don't know how long this interview is going to be. It is not going to be quick, but we will we will have the ability, you have the ability to go there and, and jump to the question that you want answered. So hopefully that will help to make sure that the information gets out that you want. So Sean, before we get into question number one, the first audio is the first category is audio, and these are categorized by alphabetical order and as best of a categorization as I could come up with for these questions. Mm -hmm. um, before we get started, is there anything you want to say or throw out there? Or? Yeah, so actually something that um, has come to light since our last conversation, um, okay. I know you, you and I have talked about this a little bit, is that um, in the last interview, we talked about the firmware updates for the existing 12 to 35 and 35 to 100. Right. Now, from CES and up until I'd say about like a week or two ago, um, pretty much every region was under the assumption that and, and, and under the original guidance that the original two lenses will be able to be firmware updated for dual IS2. Unfortunately, it turns out that due to hardware limitations, the original two won't be updated to dual IS2. Um, now, the, the difference between the old one and the new one at this point, uh, if you're looking at, at both of them, is the fact that the original lenses will be up to, I think it's like four and a half stops stabilization okay. in dual IS-1. Dual IS-2 is what holds five stop stabilization for still shooters out to 280 millimeter field of view. Um, for real world shooting, um, from what I've tested between the old version and the new version, mm -hmm. It's a very minor difference between uh, the two. If you're a video shooter, you'll probably never notice difference in the two. Okay, uh, as far as stabilization know. goes, still shooters, you know, it means it means getting a half a stop difference in your shutter speed difference out at 280 millimeter. Which, um, honestly, shooting them both in everyday situations, I've never seen a difference between even the original Dual IS one system and then when Dual IS two first started with the um, G85. Mm -hmm. I never really saw that big of a of a jump out at those ranges. Now I consider myself pretty steady handed at okay. you know 140 millimeter R lenses. So um, you know, there's a bit of an apology here that you know under the information that we were working with on the original powerpoints and the original slides that we were given internally, everything looked as though we were getting dual IS2 on the original two. Um, so a little bit of an apology for the original sure. conversation with this, but. That's that's where things are right now. No, fair enough. I mean, those lenses have been out for quite a number of years now, and yeah. I think it's I think it's fair to say that that uh, 
you know, obviously I'm sure some people would be disappointed, but um, for the most part, I think it's it's going to be okay. So thank you for your honesty and straightforwardness on that. I appreciate it. And I know that yeah. that question came up because I had asked specifically about focus tracking and whether yes. those pending firmware updates were going to have any effect, any effect on focus tracking performance and you said, as you've just shaken your head vigorously, no. So so that's a yeah. good part to add to this. So even if you have the older lenses, as I have both the, the original version of the 12 to 35 and the 35 to 100 F2.8 lenses, when it comes to focus tracking on the GH5, you'll see no performance difference between these and the um, any of the uh, other newer lenses. Exactly. So that's good to exactly. know. Exactly. Okay, good. All right. Well, there's question number zero out of the way. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> wanted to know that. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray. All right. Let's let's uh, let's hit it. Question number one under audio. So this first question is, did the in-camera audio preamp improve? And there's a little caveat. It says, because the one on the GH4 wasn't the best. I, I well, Your dog barked perfect timing to obscure that question. Because uh, the one on the GH4 wasn't the best. So yeah, in-camera audio preamp. Any improvements there? Um, yes, yeah, so the the GH5, um, there have been a lot of tweaks for the internal audio preamp and the, the, just the way the in internal system works on it. Um, will it be better to use external uh, recording like the XLR1? Yes, definitely. It's going to be better to do that. Um, most cameras, because of size limitations, power limitations, you're you're limiting what preamps you can put in it. Sure. So for run and gun, you need something straightforward. You need a good um, you need a good backup track on the camera. The internal preamps will be perfect for you and for stuff like this if you're recording online and you need just basic simple audio internals perfect for that you really want to get true high quality audio that's where the xlr1 comes in or that's where using like a tascam or a zoom or something like that it's going to give you a much better result so okay but yeah. what is built in there have been improvements but not significant improvements from the sounds of yeah. it yeah yeah, true. True audio files will will probably be able to pick up some of the differences, and I apologize okay. if my dog is barking. Um, uh, true audio files will be able to pick up the differences, um, but most most people, I don't think you're going to see much of a difference there. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Next one up. Uh, <laughs> is he going to do that Someone's all the time? Outside. What's that? <laughs> Someone's outside. Oh goodness. Okay. Um, Second question on audio. Can you record audio when you use full HD, so that's 1080p, and VFR, the variable frame rate, on the GH5? So this... So, give me one second. <laughs> just sure. Just go, just go <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll explain this question. So the question, while he's trying to get the dog to shush, um, the question is about shooting and shooting 1080p in VFR, that's variable frame rate. And the camera now shoots up to 180 frames per second in VFR. The question is, will it record audio? Because traditionally what happens is audio gets turned off when you're recording that because if you're recording, let's just say double it, you're you're shooting for 30 frame per second content. So you're shooting at 60p, so you can slow it down to 30p, so your video is half speed. If you record audio in real time, well, that gets stretched along with it. And so then the audio would play back slower. And so people generally don't, want that if you if you need external audio you would just record an external device and obviously not sync it later because it's not going to be in sync because one's slower than the other so the question is here if you can record audio while shooting vfr on the gh5 because i know for some people and this actually came up as, as a workflow someone was talking about that was very interesting and i think i have this question question in here again so it might be a duplicate but if you're shooting i know one customer i was talking to shoots for 24p uh but he shoots at 48p so that he can always easily slow it down to 50% and get a perfect smooth speed. But if he can't get his audio while shooting at 48p, then he has to record audio separately. So the question here is, do you get audio? Do you record audio when shooting in full HD, 1080p, with the variable frame rate turned on? Um, so unfortunately, no. Um, there is no audio or autofocusing when you use VFR. Um, I don't know what the exact reason is. Um, I think it has something to do with processing power and the fact that matching audio when you're recording on a 24 frame timeline while you're or you're outputting in a 24 frame timeline with 180 frame per second, matching the audio I think is maybe a little too much for what a camera can do internally. Okay. Um, and do it proper. Sure. Um, so yeah, no, nope, doesn't do it. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Hey, not every question, not every answer is going to be uh, what people want to hear here. So that's that's life. There you go. And a lot of these questions yeah, yeah. are going to be tough questions. Um, okay, so then t this is the second part of that is specifically 48p. So I know some of the rates that aren't necessarily set as variable frame rate, but some of the higher frame rates does it record. So 48p or, or even 60p, 
I know UHD 60p that does record audio, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Any any of the native um, uh, recording or, or capture modes in the camera where you're not using VFR will record audio and it okay. will sync audio properly. Okay. Um, when it comes to 48p for those users, um, I would just say hang tight. Um, okay. You know, we have a ton of stuff coming down the line with the camera. You know, we're not going to, with the GH5, we're not going to leave people out in the cold with um, stuff like this. As we keep getting comments and feedback like this, um, our engineers take a lot of this stuff to the heart. And I think um, yeah. the fact of what's in the GH5 is there is kind of testament to what our guys have been able to do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the easy way to look at that is, and I'm going to see if I can get this to sync up to the screen real quick yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the native frame rate, so whatever you see natively, not with the VFR next to it, is oh. going to have audio on there. So yeah. if we, uh, let's see here. Yep, this will work. So let's go up to here. So if you're looking at this, you should see recording quality. So that would be your Cinema 4K, 24P. So you got 24P, 24P, 60P. So there's your UHD, Ultra HD at 60P. That's going to get audio. Ultra HD at 30P obviously is going to have audio. And then down to 24P for uh, still in 4K and then full HD 60, 30, and 24. So those mm -hmm. will all be audio. So okay, so that yep. that's that's an easy easy give there. If it's listed natively, it records audio. If it's VFR, it does not. Correct. And like you said, engineering's listening, and so perhaps we can get a 48 frame rate. Like, this is a really interesting workflow to shoot that way without intention of delivering in 48p, but delivering in 24p. Um, just so you have that yeah. instant slow motion that's perfect, obviously. Mm -hmm. oh, not yep. adding any frames. Very good. Okay, next up. Can the audio meters get bigger on the screen? Now he's talking about, this question is talking about on the rear LCD yeah. camera. Can you make those audio meters any bigger? So on the GH5, no, the audio meters can't go any bigger than they are on the screen. However, from the GH4 to the GH5, they are bigger just natively. You have okay. a lot more steps um, for your actual levels on the GH5. Um, I think uh, uh, it's it's kind of like with the waveforms thing. Um, if you go too big, they start to take up the entire screen and toggling them. Um, it's a good idea, um, and, it, and again, it's that's right in line with that stuff that you know. As we have these conversations, I feed back uh, to our Japanese uh, friends sure. to to bring new ideas of possible future firmware updates. And as okay. you can, yeah, like just like you so, can see on there. Yeah, there you go. So um, there's me talking. You can see the meters are larger. And the size that you're seeing on this screen, by the way, is not representative of what's on the LCD because no. uh, this is the video output that you're looking at. So on the LCD itself, it is taking up, I would say, about a third, maybe, maybe somewhere between a quarter and a third of the screen width-wise. So yeah. it is bigger than what was on the GH4. Okay. Yep. All right. Excellent. Uh, next audio question. Is the mic input of the GH5 24 bits? I think this is going to get kicked over to the XL1. So um, the in-camera microphones are... Um, are uh, wow, you may have just stumped me because I, <laughs> I, I know I actually looked at this one before. Um, the the internal microphones are I think they're twenty four bit. Um, I can I can look it up as we okay. go through. Um, okay. Because the the XLR one definitely has the ability to do twenty four bit. Right. Of course. Um, That's the add on. But yeah, he's asking specifically as far as I understand it. This user's asking about the mic input. So the the little wee little uh, mini input on here. There we go. Where's that guy? Let's pull that out of the way. There you go. The little mini input on there. So he's yeah. asking if that is 24 bit. That would seem like an awful lot to make that thing 24 bit, but I don't know what do well, I um, Well, while while we're talking, I'll I'll pull up some of my okay. resources that I have because I, I I think I have some of the stuff that actually states what. Okay, great. What some of it is maybe. Okay, well we'll, we'll come back to that if uh, if you find it. This next one, this is a good one. I like this question a lot. Yeah. Can the XLR one? So the XLR one is the external audio interface that um, attaches to the hot shoe and then allows gives you what XLR dual XLR inputs. Uh, what else Phantom power, um, control for individual channels. Okay. So can that interface be extended with a hot shoe extension cable? Meaning, does it have to be on the camera or can you use a cable to put it somewhere else? Being the primary reason is for weight distribution. For example, if you're going to put this thing on a gimbal. Yeah. So um, I think how to answer this one. <laughs> um, there's nothing Panasonic makes okay. um, that can allow you to off uh, to put the connector off um, camera. However, if you look at something that has the same pin configurations as far as an off camera, maybe a flash cable. So, okay, um, so theoretically a TTL cable 
with all the should right be pins, able to do it. should be able to do it. Okay, yeah. so nothing officially supported, but um, I'll say it since you probably can't, that it should work. And hey, Amazon's got a great re- re- uh, return policy if it doesn't, so. Yeah, like I, I, the only reason I won't give a definitive is because I've never tested it and I yep. won't speak on something unless I've tested it before. Right. Um, I can look at a spec sheet all day and say, yeah, I can do this, but. Technically it should work, but there's no. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, our flashes have worked with other brand off-camera flash right. um, adapters. Right. So the fact that we're just pumping information through, um, I don't see a reason why you won't be able to use some. Um, and power, right? Exist. One of these, is the pin configuration? Pin configuration is not any different. Let's see here. I'll pull up this, uh, go back to this video again. So there's the pin configuration. Let me move some things out of the way. And I'm going to bring up the GH4 next to it. It is different. There's an extra pin. Yes. So that would be the power yeah. pin, wouldn't it? Let's see if I can do yeah, this. Yeah, and, and that's why, um, like I was saying, you got to look to find a cable that has all of those pins um, in the same location. Uh, and and that should be fine with it because you're just passing data through. Now, if you're recording and you're actually up at the, you know, the 48, um, um, I'm sorry, if you're recording at 96 uh, kilohertz, 24-bit audio, you probably will still have the best results keeping it on camera. You're eliminating any resistance that's going to come up through the cabling that's used oh, in between the two. Okay. Um, and we don't have control over what um, what cabling other companies use in, in that system and what the loss of power is between those two points. Okay. So it, I think that's why we don't make one mm. um, because y- there's a lot of variables there. If the cable breaks, how do you determine what is actually the cause of the problem in chain. Um, so it, it it's one that unfortunately I gotta say, um, guys gotta try. Yeah. Um, like you said, um, there are options out there um, to take a look at. Okay, all right, fair enough. It's- uh, um, And I just checked, I believe internal recording is 16 bit. 16 bit, okay. All right, so there's the answer to that question. Now I've lost my spreadsheet, um, 16 bit. Okay, so that was to, Great, now I've lost my sheet completely. Oh, there it is. There you are. Uh, here I are. That was to the question, is the mic input of the GH5 24 bits? Okay, very good. All right, so uh, thank you. We are on. Mm-hmm. That's it for audio. So now, in, and again, if you think your audio question hasn't been answered yet, it might be mixed in with other ones because it was like a 16-part question, as a lot of these were. <laughs> uh, we have some very enthusiastic people out there. It's awesome. It is just- There uh, are. Oh, it's been fantastic seeing the reaction to this. Okay. This next section we have titled Codex and Bit Rates, which is basically a way of saying, heck, I don't know where to put this, so I'm putting it here. Uh, first one, <laughs> it would be nice to have more implementation of the HEVC, that's the High Efficiency Video Codec, aka H.265, included in 4K modes. DJI is already doing it, offering both H.264 and H.265. Having a camera that should sell well like the GH5 using HEVC would be big. That will have a that will push the tech forward, speed up HEVC support, and they mean industry wide, um, etc. Since photo 6K 6K photo is already using HEVC, I don't understand why it's not being used everywhere else. All right, so so this <laughs> smile is, <and> nod. <laughs> this is a um, this is a very very hard point to to honestly um, look at. Okay. So yes, 6K photo uses HEVC. Um, as the codec for for recording. Um, the reality is, if you've ever tried working with an HEVC codec in Premiere or Final Cut or anything right now, it is a dog, it's a pain to work with, and there's very, very limited support for it right now. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, Panasonic is not in the habit of putting out a bunch of technology that may be three or four years ahead of its time um, and limiting your your productivity with a product i think is is probably the best way to put it okay um other manufacturers have you know instituted full h hevc support and the biggest problems that you always ran into with that was that you had to transcode everything in order to actually work on any computer you had to transcode it and even now i mean like i have a really you know pretty hefty decked out uh pc and 6k photo uh taking those files and working on them on a computer without transcoding them is a pain, mm. um, and I'm using the most up-to-date version of Premiere Pro, sure. um, and and I'm shooting in 4.3 because that's the 6K file size, but um, of course I would love to see um, us push the technology forward with HEVC, and I think it could be a benefit in the future, but the reality is 
Um, a lot of people look at HEVC and they look at some of these these tag words that are being thrown around by um, by I'd say like the the higher level um, semi pro and then into the pro users. Um, you know, we we throw around thinking that HEVC is like the the end all of end alls as as you know it's going to produce much much better footage, and it it can if you have the the equipment to work with it. Mm. Um, like I said, we, we don't, um, we're just not in the habit of, of putting out a product that you have to end up working 10 times harder for to get a result out of. Sure. Um, now that's not saying that in the future we don't add HEVC, um, support for some, some modes or something like that. I mean, a lot of that stuff is still, um, you know, under, under study and under, under discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, if software gets to the point where it can ingest HEVC footage without any hiccups at all, then I think you'll see Panasonic go that way. Okay. Until that point, this you know we're using H.264 limited H.265 uh, codec, and sorry. Okay. No, that's that's a that's a good answer. That's a good answer. I mean, I know some people will say, well, why not just have it in there as an option for those people that have the systems that are powerful enough or don't mind doing it. But as with anything there's a limit to how much time and resources can be put into a single product. And uh, I mean, that's just, that's just math of just how many times, you know, how much you can put in there. Do you put your yeah. engineering hours into that or do you put them into something that more people are going to use? And when a small percentage of people are going to be able to use it, then that makes sense. It's not going to make everybody happy, but you can't please all the people all the time. Well, yeah. And, and, and to be completely honest with everybody too, I mean, you know, you, you run into the fact that like all camera companies are businesses too. So yeah, you course. have to look at, if we output something where we offer HEVC codec um, across everything, and we end up having to coach cust you know coach customers and users through how to work with it, um, the the time involved with that kind of thing from a business standpoint, that's very very tough to to manage. Mm -hmm. You know when a call center gets in inundated with calls on it, when we can do something and and this goes to that whole ecosystem that Panasonic believes in. Build a product that actually does what you need it to do when you need it to do it, and it doesn't get in your way. Yeah. Um, when HEVC is ready, you'll see us implement it. If it's not ready yet, so we're just not at that point yet where we're going to put that on the customers yet. Right. right. Um, okay. And I will emphasize yet because <laughs> this is this is technology. You never know what will come down the line. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next one. Why doesn't the GH5? I love these ones. So why doesn't why doesn't the GH5 <laughs> record 10-bit 422 in 4K 60p? Since Panasonic will be an early adopter of the higher bit rate 400 megabit codec, why not a 200 to 240 megabit uh, codec? If 150 is good enough for 4K 30, I think 240 would be more than enough for 4K 60 10-bit 422. Okay, that's that's a big long question. You've got it in front of you too. So mm -hmm. let's let's start okay. with what does it do. So he's saying, why doesn't it do 10-bit 422-4K60? What does it do in 4K60? Okay, so in 4K60P, it records 4208-bit. 4208-bit. Yeah, it can do 4K60P, 422-10-bit. You just have to record out over HDMI. Right. Okay. So I guess let's answer the, the first part of this question, just that, that exact point. Why doesn't it record? So... 422-10-bit 4K60P is a lot of information. It's a lot of um, processing power. And the GH5, while the Venus Engine 10 is a major, major improvement over, um, I would argue, any processor of any camera manufacturer right now, um, there are limitations. Um, the GH4, if everyone remembers, GH4 was only able to record 4208-bit internally, and you had to output to get 422-10-bit. Right. Um, the fact that we've brought 422 10-bit into 4K 30p internally is is a huge step forward um, because it's it's getting closer to a a kind of like ideal situation in 444. Um, so the reason it doesn't do it is in some cases hardware limitation um, and in in other cases just you know you look at well if it could do it and it puts a record limitation on the camera for heat or something like sure. that, we're not going to do that. The GH system has always stood and will always stand for the fact that you don't have overheating, you don't have record limits. 
if you want to record it, there are other ways to do it. So, okay. I'm looking through the, one. I'm looking through the options that are on here now, and I don't even know what firmware is on this. This, this camera that I have in my hands is a pre-production unit for anybody who's wondering. So yeah. the things that you see on this camera may or may not be in the shipping product may change. Well, uh, you uh, the one that you have is at, I think either 0.55 or 0.58, um, which is another point that I, I want to make at some point in this, cause there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of comments going around about the autofocusing system and um, some of the issues in uh, firmware level variants across the globe. So <laughs> probably want to answer that when we get to autofocusing. Okay. But um, yeah, it, it's only going to record 4208-bit in 4K 60p. That's the fastest frame rate with the most color. 4K um, 60, 420, okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Now what I was looking at that I was going to ask you about, that's 24p. So that's why it's a 422. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then the firmware update that's coming because this, this firmware update path that you guys have made public, uh, the, the 400 megabit one, what is that for? What is that size and frame rate? Okay. So the frame rate and um, that stuff hasn't been released yet. Oh, that hasn't. Um, okay. It, but what we've stated is that we will be adding in 4K 400 megabit all intra codecs. So this is the this is the key there. This is this is why um, honestly when when people look at well it can do this so why can't it do that and the reality is, is that well because 400 megabits and all intra codec um, the internal codecs are all IPB or long got. Um, there's a lot of processing power difference between those two. Can you uh, can you give a an explanation of what the difference is. What is long op versus intra versus mm -hmm. um, IBP? What are, what is the difference there between these? So long op or IPB, it's the same thing. Um, what that is is it's it's a compression where you take your iframe, you take your vector information, which is your P, and then you take your second frame, which is your B. So really, in any video stream, there's only two JPEGs in that area or in, in this little tiny sequence when you're working with, with setups. So you have your iframe, your vector information, and your B frame. What that does is you record two JPEGs, and then the vector information is everything that's different between those two frames, and then that writes all the files. What that means is when you put it on a computer, Premiere or Final Cut or whatever software you're using has to decode that and create those files. So if you're using After Effects, things like that, you get some weird artifacting. It's not it's not the greatest for After Effects, but it's one of the more efficient codecs if you're for most modern cameras to use. Unless you're going to go to Motion JPEG, which is an archaic, um, um, codec. wow, format codec <laughs> format. Yeah, <laughs> um, when you go to the 400 megabit all I or all intra, the difference there is that every single frame is a JPEG. There's no, there's no made up information between it based okay. on vector information. So your bit rates are going to be much, much higher, which means in the GH5, you're talking about 15 minutes of record time for 128 gig memory card. If you just go by math, <laughs> just going by math, <laughs> okay. um, 400 megabit on 128 gig card at, at in, in all I is going to be about 15 minutes of record time. That's 4k at what frame rate? Uh, that's it. It's at any frame rate. At, at that point, this is because we're, we're just looking at, at what a bit rate is versus okay, um, okay. that. Because your frame rate's not going to really matter at what the bit rate is. Oh, right, it's just the amount second. of data you're writing. Right, right, it's bits per second, not bits per frame. Okay. Exactly. Right. Where the advantage there is that when you put it in, a, in software like After Effects or Premiere or Final Cut, it means that you can use a lesser system to edit this because the software doesn't have to decode this information and create new frames. So... Looking at the two, as you can see, they're, they're apples and oranges when you look at, well, if it can do this, why can't it do that? Because you have a lot of processing power that's needed for one and not as much processing power needed for the right. other. So, you know, when, when uh, whoever asked this was saying, you know, we've already adopted the fact that we're going to higher bit rate. Why not 200 to 240, 264 and IPB at 4K60? It, just by math, okay, yeah, it may work just by math. But the reality is, is that when you read out a sensor faster, when you're processing that much more information, that much more color information, you run into some of those heat barriers. You run into some of those those record limit barriers, and we'll never. Like, it, it goes back to that whole point. We'll never put out a product that's going to give you a heat failure or a record limit failure. Um, 
we we build a product that bridges from consumer out into the the pro series broadcast customers you know the customers that are using the sixty thousand dollar cameras you know that are using our Veracam, that are using you know that level product you can't have a product overheat on you in those situations there's a reason why if you watch um uh the grand tour on uh, amazon prime the reason why if you watch it, there's GH4s all over the, the system. They don't fail even when they're in the desert or when they're in the tundra. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we, we take it to heart. We, we understand that, that, you know, just by looking at numbers, why can't you do this versus that? It, and it comes down to the reliability of a product. We're okay. not going to put something out that's ever going to give you a, a, a misstep in performance. Right. And if that means not giving you 10-bit 422-4K60 internally – we're not going to put it in there, but you're going to get it out over HDMI. And at that point, it's better to record it out over HDMI because then you're going to be able to record in ProRes. You're going to be able to record, you know, uncompressed. And and when you're looking at that level of production, you're probably actually going to want to do that anyway because you're going to want to off, offload into, you know, hard drive, in, into actual like solid state drives or, or output that way. Um, it, it's, yeah. Okay. It's just where technology is. That's fine. No, that's that's great. It's a good good answer <laughs> with a, with a really good description, um, and more than just a we can't kind of a, a description. There's a good good reasoning for it, and I think I think that yeah. well, hopefully most customers will appreciate this and not consider it a um, I don't know bowing out. That it's this idea that we really are trying to produce a camera that will not fail, that is reliable because that is key. You have a, a camera yeah. failure on set, and you know you're toast. So, yep. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Next one is OpenGate. Uh, it's still in codec and bit rates. Will the OpenGate high res anamorphic be 10 bit 422? Um, so unfortunately, I don't have an answer for anybody okay. on this one yet. Okay. Um, we're still we're still kind of far out from what um, our domain, me- our uh, Japanese members uh, tell us what the actual funnel specs are. Okay. Um, I know that there's, um, there's a couple videos out there of people using 6k photo in four, in four, three aspect ratio, um, shooting anamorphic with it. And sure, that's one way to do it. Um, but you're at a hard 30 frame per second. So don't take what you see out there right now necessarily as final. Um, it's a really cool experimental way to use sure. 6K photo in that in that realm because it is 4-3 aspect ratio. It's in it's in the 6K. Um, but yeah, there's just no no hard answer I can give okay. you guys yet. Sorry, That's fine. don't have an answer yet. Easy enough. All right, this next one's a long one. Uh, the open gate <laughs> high res anamorphic mode. So again, this will record basically the whole sensor. 5K in 16 by 9 is 4,800 pixels wide, and 5K DCI is 5,120 wide. Why not offer then 5K video as well? The GH5 will already record more than that pixel count. Offering 5K would be truly interesting for some people, and it would turn the GH5 into the first of its kind, the first hybrid 5K camera on the market. So this is another little little, little bit of a loaded question. So just just because you could do something and be the first to do it um, <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way to go about it. Um, nobody really records 5K. Um, the pixel advantage over 4K is... It's, it's in all reality, it's really not that big of a difference. It, that, that would be if, if, if we came out with 5K video, um, it would immediately be pegged as, oh, well, that's just a marketing ploy. It, to, to be completely honest with you, and I'm a marketing guy, <laughs> um, if if you look at the the progression of where the industry standards are, you had 720, 1080, 4K, 6K, 8K. Um, so it it really I think just comes down to that. Yeah, sure, we we could have tried to do 5K, but we didn't. So sorry. And the <laughs> the larger remind me what it's called the um, when you're shooting the video on the, using the whole sensor. It's it was called large or bigger something 4k that where you're getting a little bit more than 4k it's the open gate where you have a little bit more on the width as well um oh so so that's that's um that's cinema 4k or dci that's cinema 4k okay yeah so cinema 4k um, uh let's see here is so yeah um cine 4k is a bit wider than uhd okay so if you if you put a cine 4k file on a 16 by 9 monitor you get a little bit of black bar on the top and bottom but even that, you're only talking. I think if if I remember the math right, you're only talking 128 pixels on either on top bottom, okay. like on the difference there. 
it's not that big of a difference. It's just what your output format's going to be. If you're going to a big screen um, like the GH4 was consistently actually put out on, you have to be able to record in in that DCI format. And that's where, you know, cameras like Ari and Red and Veracam, that's what they can record in. So having that, and that that is actual true 4K. The way we talk about 4K, we really mean UHD. Right, Ultra HD, um, yeah, which is double so, HD. Yeah, so it's really, it, it, it goes into this where if you look at it, 5K doesn't really have a place in that. 6K at least is a, is a, large enough jump where reframing and stabilizing in post in 4k is actually beneficial right um 5k you lose a lot of that benefit because you just don't have enough pixels outside of that range to really work with so yeah sorry guys no another good answer all right uh next coding bitrate one what is the bitrate of the 180 frame per second slow-mo so the vfr the variable frame rate i might be able to answer that one myself and pull it up here <laughs> um reality is it's not listed on the camera and oh. i don't have a hard number to give you oh, okay yeah shows so where it says can we switch back over to this camera um where it says for example uh let's go he said uhd no he didn't he just didn't say the frame rate. so let's just say yeah, yeah let's go down to one where we know we can get all the way up to 180 frame per second so Full HD, so that's 1080p, yeah. 2997. Then it says 100 megabit VFR available. So these all say mm-hmm. VFR available, and they'll say 100 megabit, or you get up to 100. But that one doesn't. There you go. There's 100. Uh, yeah. So so ab- about the most I can say about it, because e- e- even I don't know exactly what the actual bit rate is um, of the the variable frame rate. Um, it's a lot higher bit rate than what the GH4 did at 96 frame. Okay. So that's why to that question before of like are, are, uh, from earlier today, are, are you going to see any differences or loss of quality? Um, what the guy was talking about or the person was talking about was um, when you go to the higher frame rate, if your bit rate is low, you get a lot of artifacting. Um, the GH5 uses a higher, a much higher bit rate than that. I don't know exactly what it is. Okay. Um, but that's why I'm confident in saying that if you're shooting at 180 frame or 120 frame or 96 frame, whatever you want to shoot at, um, it will be a marked difference from the GH bar. Okay. Um, I said four really weird there. Okay. <laughs> R. R. Will the high resolution anamorphic mode have 422 10-bit support or will it just be 4208 bit So this again is one that... Um, as we get closer to when we have the firmware update uh, released on uh, the second half of the year, then I then we'll have a lot more information about the uh, high-res anamorphic mode. Um, and I appreciate that the person actually called it high-res anamorphic. Um, that's what it's going to be called. It's not going to be called 6K anamorphic. Got it. Uh, that just confuses people. Um, yeah, uh, I... I, I, I Wish I could speak to it, uh, but I haven't even been able to shoot with it myself. Um, I don't even have a dev firmware to okay. play around with yet. So, and that's right. I mean, this is a question about something that's still what six months out or something like that. So, um, it's... yeah, something like that. Um, because that 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 firmware is second half of the year. Um, okay. I don't think we've actually labeled like when it's going to come out. Okay. Uh, except the first round firmware. Okay. So. so that's still a ways out. So it, it, it yeah. simply is an unknown at this point. Yeah. Well, we'll 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 definitely keep everyone updated. So. Okay. Uh, this next one, I think we've already answered this actually, but I'll just put it on here for the sake of com- of uh, completion. It says, what are the bit rates when it comes to the high frame rates, a comparison between 120, 150, 180 frame per second and future bit rates after the summer update? So, yeah. So again, the the question, yeah. we've answered it. Um, there's there's not a specific frame rate, a uh, specific uh, uh, bit, rate. bit rate, thank you, listed. And of course, for anything coming up for the summer, we don't even know yet. So, okay. All righty. Let's see here. We've got... I think we're going to take our first break here because we've uh, we've gone through a chunk of time here. So we're <laughs> going to take a quick little break and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 